Dear students, welcome to our new lecture. Today we are going to start chapter number fifteen, and that is statistics. Um, students, today we are going to start chapter number fifteen. So I hope that the document is clear, and don't worry, we will brush it up again. As soon as the school, the school reopens. Now, students, when I say statistics, immediately certain measures as mean, median, and more comes to your mind. Yes or no? Whenever I say statistics, students, these three measures, mean, median, and more, students immediately comes to your mind. But mean, median, and more are not only the concept studied in statistics. These measures, students, mean, median, and more are. Cumulatively called measures of central tendency. This measure, students, are called measures of central tendency. Now, I doubt about the definitions. You may be knowing what is mean. But students, what are the exact definitions? Let us study because whatever is there in this chapter number fifteen, students, same syllabus is there for J W means. Now, how to define B? B. The formula to find B is x bar is equal to sigma of x i divided by n. Based on formula, ninety percent of the definitions in statistics are studied. The sum of observations divided by total number of observations students gives us b, and formally arithmetic b or simple b is denoted as x bar. So, how to define students b? That is very important. The sum of observations divided by total number of observations. Gives us students for the mean. Then how to define median students? Median is the positional average. This is asked as MCQ in you can say board examination and even you can say in general debates in previous papers. The other name of median is positional average. Students, that is why whenever you find median, we have to arrange the observations in ascending order. So, when the observations are arranged in ascending order, the value of observation located in the middle is called median. Students of the given observations. Whenever you want to find median. We have to arrange the observations in ascending order, and the value of observation located in the middle of the observation is the median of the given observation. Then, students, more. How to define more? The value of observation repeated maximum number of times in the given data is called students more of. The data. I repeat, the value of observation repeated maximum number of times in the given data series is called mode of the data. And I think you have also studied this empirical formula to find z, which is nothing but 3m minus twice x bar. This formula, students, you have already studied, and this formula was given by. Famous statistician students, Carl Pearson. So students, mean, mode, and median are called cumulatively the 
measures of central tendency because this measures represent the central part of the data. Clear students? So this you should know as basics, the definitions must be clearly understood, the definitions must be memorized, if not word to word, but you should be students in a position to define measures of central tendency. If I go one step ahead, in mean, we have three types of mean, arithmetic mean which is simple mean x bar, geometric mean which is denoted by capital G and harmonic mean which is denoted by capital H. But altogether that is a diversion from the current topic but you should remember that in mean also three types of means are defined. Arithmetic mean, geometric mean and harmonic mean. Geometric mean and harmonic mean we will study students in chapter number 9 which is sequence and series. Now students, having defined the measures of central tendency, I am going to define what is a measure of dispersion. Our next concept is measure of dispersion. Now before that, you should know that in statistics data is broadly classified into two categories. First is group data and second is students group data. In statistics, broadly students, given data is classified into two types. First is ungrouped data and students second is group data. The data which is in raw form without frequencies is called group data and the data which is in a distribution form with frequency is called group data. Remember this students. In statistics, the data is broadly classified, broadly classified into two types. First is ungrouped data and second is group data. Ungrouped data is the data students without frequency. And group data is data with frequency in terms of classes of frequency distribution. That means you should understand. Concepts are very important in statistics. So please remember this definition. Once again, data without frequency in the raw form is called ungrouped data. And data with frequency, which is in an organized frequency distribution form, is called students group data. This the students we have to perfectly remember and memorize. Now students what is a measure of dispersion? Say I have a group data observations which are 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Total of this observation is 50. So if I operate B, then x bar is equal to summation xi upon n, 15 divided by 5, and that is 3. So B of this 5 observation is 3. Now students, I operate modulus of xi minus x bar. My next problem which I make modulus is always a positive value. So modulus of 1 minus is mod of minus 2 which is 2. Modulus of 2 minus 3 is mod of minus 1 which is 1. Mod of 0 is 0. 4 minus 3 is 1. Mod of a positive value is positive value. So students, now I am defining a measure of dispersion. A measure of dispersion 
indicates how far the observations are from the measures of central tendency. I can say dispersion of 1 from mean 3 is 2. Distance is always positive, so we took modulus. Dispersion of observation 2 from mean 3 is 1. Dispersion of 3 from mean 3 is 0. Dispersion of 4 from mean 3 is 1. Dispersion of 5 from mean 3 is what? 2. So, in short, how to define students a measure of dispersion? A measure of dispersion indicates how far the given observations are from the measures of central tendency. I can take even x i minus n. Then my dispersion is with respect to median. And even I can take x i minus z. So this, then my dispersion is with respect to so, a measure of dispersion indicates how far the given observations are students from the measures of central tendency. Now, as such students, there are four fundamental measures of dispersion. The first measure is range, which is denoted as capital R. Second measure is quartile deviation, which is denoted as QD. Third measure is mean deviation, which is denoted as MD. And fourth measure is standard deviation students which is denoted as sigma or small s this is spelled as small sigma and this is capital sigma summation so in Greek also we have small and capital letters so differentiate between the two sigmas Okay, spelling is same, but then meaning interpretations are different. So, a measure of dispersion indicates how far the given observations are from the measures of central tendency. The basic fundamental measures of central tendency are mean, median, and mean. Now, students, as I told, as I discussed, we have four fundamental measures of dispersion, of which the first is range, denoted by capital R, second is quartile deviation, denoted by QD, fourth is mean deviation, denoted by MD, sorry, third is mean deviation, denoted by MD, and fourth is standard deviation, which is denoted by sigma, or small s. Deviation means students distance. So if I say xi minus x bar, this is deviation of every observation from me. If I write xi minus n, it is called deviation of every observation from me. And students, if I write xi minus z, it is called deviation of every observation from so, this is the fundamental theory, students. We are now going to divide the lecture in two parts so that this theory can be easily memorized by So, in the first part, we have studied measure of central tendency, measure of dispersion, and even we have highlighted the four measures of dispersion which are range denoted by R, quartile deviation denoted by QD. Mean deviation denoted by MD and standard deviation which are denoted by sigma only small s. Students, we are parting the lecture so that it becomes very easy for you to understand the basic theories. And even we have studied in statistics, the data is broadly students divided into two categories. First is ungrouped data and second is group data. 
the data which is in raw form without the mention of frequency is called a group data and data which is in an organized form or in the form of a frequency distribution is called its group data. So here we pin off our part 1 of the lecture and remaining theories we will discuss in the part 2 of the lecture. Thank you students.